Hello, welcome to WC Wellness. I'm your host, Renya, and today I'm going to be talking about how I balance a busy schedule and the gym. So I've been going to the gym consistently for about 10 months, and I'd say I live a pretty active and busy lifestyle. Currently, I am in about six classes, I have two jobs, and I go to the gym at least three days a week. The biggest secret to keeping up with it is nutrition, but simultaneously, the biggest hindrance for me personally is also nutrition. I grew up having very unhealthy eating habits, and I always had a very poor relationship with food. Because of that, I constantly struggled, and I currently suffer health consequences due to my fear of food, but the past two years have been spent rebuilding my entirety. When I was in high school, I never took nutrition seriously, so I just overworked my body. My calorie expenditure was so much higher than my caloric intake, and it was definitely messing with my energy levels. Because I wasn't eating enough, I was tired all the time, and instead of getting my energy from carbohydrates, I ended up getting a lot of it from caffeine supplements. It wasn't really until about two years ago that I started taking it seriously, and the amount of changes and differences I've noticed in both my own body, energy, and mental health is so drastic. I do want to give a little disclaimer and say that everyone is different, their body is different, their limits are different, and their genetics are different. I'm going to explain the things that I do and how I balance everything, but it's not going to work for everyone. You just have to find what works for you, you have to get tips from other people, it's a community effort, and then you have to apply them to yourself. So for me, balancing a very busy lifestyle and the gym is all about food and what you eat. For example, I never ate breakfast because I was the kind of kid that always complained and was like, oh, I'm nauseous in the morning, this, that. And the best comparison I can give is maybe a car. If you start your car in the winter and if you don't let the engine heat up and if you start running and if it's an old car, it's going to have some issues. If you try to go on a 200 mile trip with maybe a quarter of a tank and your car has poor gas mileage, you are going to run out and you are going to be stranded. Now for me, I go to the gym in the morning, normally around like 5 or 6 in the morning to fit in. And it's really important that you eat before going to the gym as well. I mean, if your body is going to be working hard, you need something in your stomach, you need a little just wake up boost. I normally get up, the first thing I do is I get a bowl of granola and yogurt and I get my morning coffee. I mean, one of the biggest issues I had with food was counting calories. I would do it obsessively and in such an unhealthy manner that it really took a toll on my health. Now currently, instead of having a caloric restriction, I have a caloric minimum. I grew up thinking that about a thousand calories was going to make you fat. I just want you to know that a thousand calories is not enough even for a growing toddler. Even if you're stagnant, your body is taking energy and it's using it, and you get energy from carbohydrates. Your body needs fuel in order to maintain. That's right, not lose or gain, but to maintain. And if you aren't getting any, it's going to take from your muscle and your brain. Making sure that I eat every three hours has really helped me because it's been giving me energy throughout the day, so I no longer have to drink an insane amount of caffeine just to get to 2 p.m. And when I'm eating and when I'm choosing my food, it's everything in moderation. Yeah, sometimes I eat like a bodybuilder and it'll be like egg whites and kale for breakfast, and then other days I'm gonna have a pint of Ben and Jerry's for breakfast because I love ice cream. Another thing that I do so I don't get obsessive about it and make sure that my relationship with food is healthy is not count calories. Like I said, I have a caloric minimum and once I kind of guesstimate that I've hit that, I stop counting. What's a lot more important than the calories I'm eating are the macronutrients. Macronutrients are three nutrients incredibly important to your body's function, and they're protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Now, the latter two I used to be so afraid of to consume, but it's really important to be aware that carbohydrates aren't things like white bread or waffles. Carbs can be fruit, vegetables, whole grains, etc. Like I previously stated, your body naturally gets energy from carbs, so if you don't have carbs, you don't have energy. Fat is also really important because it contains many amino and fatty acids that make up your muscles. And protein, we all know protein. Protein in the right amount is also important because it helps your muscles build themselves. Now, I didn't know this, but when you work out, your muscles create little tears and they repair themselves to become bigger over time. That's why it's important to eat protein before you work out and right after you work out. 
So now, because I have alarms set every three hours reminding me to eat, I usually eat breakfast at 4 a.m., a snack at 7, lunch at 11, a snack at 2, dinner at 5, and normally like another snack at 8. It's really hard to maintain that with work, especially when you work either like 6 to 12 in the morning or you work like 4 to 9 p.m. at night. Even then, I normally have like some food on me. Like normally I have a teeny tiny like protein bar I can slip into my pocket and like I can go run for like two minutes and eat it and then I'll be fine. Making sure that I'm eating every three hours, hitting my macronutrients, and making sure that the food is both something I like and something that's good for my body has helped me so much. I mean, how your day goes, to me personally, kind of begins with what you ate last night. I mean, like I literally said, if you are a car and you have no fuel, you can't go anywhere. If you're a person and you have no fuel, you can't do anything. I mean, people can also not take nutrition as seriously as I do, and they can just, you know, make sure they eat something every couple of hours, and that's also okay. I am a certain type and I know myself and I know what works for me, but if counting like macros and everything is going to make you more stressed, if it's going to make you obsessed with food, then don't do it. It's just really important to know yourself and know how to apply certain concepts to yourself. Especially if your goal is a sustainable lifestyle instead of like something, you know, like a fad diet or like, oh, I'm going to try to be vegan for two months. You really have to make sure that you get to the root of the problem, and the root of the problem is, most of the time, people aren't taking care of themselves. I mean, when it comes down to it, nutrition is so important to physical health and mental health. I mean, the next most important thing that I do keeping up with my schedule is making sure I have rest days. In high school, I used to work myself to the bone. I would be in like two sports at a time, I would be in work, and I would be in school. And then I also wouldn't get any sleep. I was literally feral and I was running on nothing but teen angst and caffeine and it was awful and I was not happy and everyone knew that. Now, I only go to the gym about three days a week and when I'm at the gym, I do a mix of like lifting and cardio and like weights and then like some intensive hit training. I mean, I also make sure that I mix it up too. It's like if I'm gonna do some hit training one day, I cannot be doing some really heavy lifting the next day. So normally I have like a heavy day, I have off and like I just go walk around or like I'm walking to and from school, all of that. And then the next day I do something a little lighter, a break day, and then on Friday I do something a little harder and then I have my two days of weekend rest. I mean, every couple of months, I will take a week off from the gym, and I used to be so scared of like losing muscle and getting fat and all of this if I took, you know, maybe two days off. That is not true. Scientifically, you lose your muscle mass after about two weeks, and that's starting to lose. It's not going to be gone in like poof, no more muscle. But it's so important for your body to be able to build itself back up because like it, it, it's going to be the car example again. You can't be running on your last quarter tank of fuel for the rest of your life. It's just gonna diminish and then you're gonna be poof, out. The same thing goes for your body. You need to give your body a little break. You are not gonna get fat, you're not gonna lose muscle, you're not gonna be unproductive. You're literally just giving your body a well-needed break and then it's gonna come back and actually perform better at the gym. Like some days, if I work three doubles on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it's Monday, I don't wanna get up at four in the morning and go to the gym. Sometimes my rest days are planned, some days they're just, I don't want to go to the gym, I'm not waking up, I'm too tired. And that was literally today. My alarm woke me up at 4 in the morning, I said nope, I set an alarm for 5 in the morning, that woke me up, and I said nope, I'm going back to bed, and I woke up at 8 in the morning, and I had a lovely morning to myself. It's just, I think, really important to be kind to yourself. I mean, if you are only eating foods because of their health benefits, not because they're enjoyable, and if you are pushing yourself so hard at the gym, you are going to be miserable and you're going to start hating it. That's not a sustainable lifestyle. I mean, it's everything in moderation, right? You're supposed to have candy, you're supposed to have sweets, you're supposed to have cake and chocolate and carbs and all of this stuff. You're supposed to be able to skip the gym and say, you know what, I'm okay with that. Because I feel like people who go to the gym are so hard on themselves all the time because they're perfectionists. I mean, you're gonna burn yourself out if you're overworking yourself, not eating enough, and if you're only doing things because of the long-term outcome instead of you actually enjoying it. There has to be a mix of those two. I mainly just listen to my body. If my body is exhausted, I'm not gonna force myself to go to the gym. If I have an off day and I'm super energetic, I'm not gonna force myself to go lift like 500 pounds, you know? But I might do a little light cardio. And currently, I have something every single day and it's gonna be that way until the end of the semester. So I don't have my weekends at all. Saturday and Sunday are taken up by work because I have my first job at 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. and then I have my second job from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., both Saturday, Sunday, and normally I'm so exhausted I go straight to bed. 
And then on the weekdays, luckily I don't have to work on the weekdays except Friday nights at my second job, but on the weekdays then I have six classes. So if you take into account everything I previously said with like nutrition, eating, making sure I sleep, and like being nice to myself, I get exhausted pretty easily and most of the time I have no idea what's going on. I'm not even gonna lie. And the way I keep up with everything is gonna sound so type A, but every hour is planned out. It's so funny. I mean, obviously I can divert from schedule and like just do whatever I want to do, but it helps to have a calendar and to mark out everything you need to get done when it's getting done and when it's due. Like, I literally had the times I need to eat marked on the calendar. But like, for example, let me look at my calendar. Like today, I wake up at 4 in the morning for the gym. I did not go, by the way. I did skip. But I was supposed to wake up at 4 in the morning for the gym. And then I go to the gym from 5 to 7 a.m. And then I go home. I have a break. I leave for school at 10.20 in the morning. Then I have class at 11. Then class is over at 12. Then I have a snack, etc. So on and so forth. You know what I'm saying, though. Every hour is mapped out. Now, I'm not saying everyone has to be so uptight about it, but it is good to have a schedule and to know when you need to get things done. For classwork, I also have no idea what I'm doing in any of my classes. The only thing that is saving me is my little assignment sheet that I wrote up at the beginning of the semester. I went through every class syllabus and I wrote down every single assignment, quiz, whatever, and I wrote down the due date and I mark it off. I also set reminders so I don't miss a deadline or a due date. Every single morning, I wake up, I look at my calendar, I look at my homework list, and I make adjustments if needed. I mean, I don't think, especially with my schedule, I would even be able to stay on top of just one thing if I did not stay organized. I either have to be at work, I have to be doing school, I have to be at the gym, or I have to be sleeping. And you know what? Growing up, I always heard a term from my mom, like, if you wanted to, you would, you know? I mean, it was normally referring to, like, cleaning my room or something, but it's like, if I wanted to, I would. And the reason I would is because I would make time for it. If I wanted to do blank, I would actively have to open up my schedule. But you know, a day only has 24 hours in it, so, like, what are you supposed to do? I mean, for me, the best thing I can do is just time management, scheduling, and prioritize. If I have to miss the gym because I have a lot of homework, that's okay. Or if I don't have a lot of homework so I can go to the gym another time during the day, that's awesome. Some days I'm going to sleep in a little later, some days I'm going to get up earlier. I am not going to follow my schedule to the T. But it is really important to have it, to have everything written down right in front of you so you know what's going on and you can make time if you need to make time. I mean, that also includes like a social life. That's one thing I haven't mentioned yet and it's really funny actually. It is really hard for me to be able to get together with people because I'm normally only free at like, you know, four in the morning or like, you know, 10 p.m. at night and that's like weird. Who wants to get up at four in the morning so you can hang out with your friend for two hours before they have to like do something? That's so stupid. I mean, when I was in primary school, it's like, oh, if my friend didn't talk to me for like a week, maybe we're not friends. Now, as an adult, I totally get it. Everyone is so busy. Like, me and my best friend, we don't talk for like months on end and then we hang out and it's the best thing ever, but we're just so busy with adult shit. It's just really important to make time for things, but also to prioritize. And it's the everything in moderation. What do I find most important to me? Getting school done. Okay, so I always put school first. Then secondly, my job. Then thirdly, my social life. I am okay compromising my social life right now in order to get my degree. If for a semester I can't see my friends every week, I'm totally okay with that because that means I'm getting my degree. Or on the flip side, if I skip my Friday 3 p.m. class because I want to hang out with my friends and I still have skips left in that class, that's also okay. It's just all about finding the balance and what works for you because I will tell you, my very type A uptight schedule is not going to work for most people. But a lot of the things I do can be taken and applied to someone, just, you know, maybe not as intense. There actually used to be a joke in my friend group that I would never become an alcoholic, I would become a workaholic. And you know what? This semester I am missing out on a lot of stuff and it is kind of bumming me out. Like on the weekends if there's a cute event that my boyfriend and I want to go to or I want to go to, I can't because I'm always working. If there's a late night function, I can't attend because I have a bedtime of 10 p.m. because I have to be up early in the morning. I mean missing out on a lot of stuff that you're supposed to be doing at 20 years old kind of bums me out. But I also know that it's temporary and it's something that I'm doing for myself and my own future, so I'm okay with it. Like, I'm also kind of making it sound like my life is a boot camp. It's not. 
I mean, I think I have a good schedule going on, but I also don't follow it all the time. I listen to what my body needs, if it's more food, if it's sleep, if it's this, that, and I give myself breaks when I need them. I mean, anyone who goes to the gym knows how exhausting lifting and like high intensive workouts can be on your body if you're not taking care of yourself. And then to add in two jobs and six classes, it's, it's doable, but you have to have the right mindset. I mean, I've been learning so much about myself in the past three years, and this schedule works for me. At the end of the day, you have to find out what works for you. I mean, it's taken me a long time to get even a brief idea of what works, but right now I'm trying out what works and I'm doing what works because guess what? It works. But that also doesn't mean that I can't change what works. I mean, at the end of the semester, a lot of stuff is gonna have to be reworked, and that's okay because I'm doing what'll work for a three month period. It is not sustainable. I mean, the best advice I have for people who manage a busy lifestyle and the gym and just all of this different stuff is to get to know yourself. Find out what works for you, find out what makes your body happy, what makes your body not happy. Make sure that you eat, make sure that you get enough sleep, and make sure that you balance everything and have moderation. Just listen to your body physically and mentally. Your body will let you know when you are exhausted, when you're hungry, when you're not, when this and that. You need to just listen to those signs, adjust to it, and find a sustainable lifestyle. And it's not going to take two days, two weeks, whatever. It takes 21 days to even build a habit. I mean, once you get the ball rolling and you find out what works for you, I promise that everything will be smooth sailing going forward. I'm your host, Renya, and thank you for listening to WC Wellness.